This is Up Close. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. Why aren't parents happy? According to studies, they're far less happy than those without children. And New York Magazine contributing editor Jennifer Senior tackles that problem in her new book, All Joy and No Fun, The Paradox of Modern Parenthood. I interview her in this week's episode. Also in this week's episode of Up Close, the self-described tiger mother, Amy Chua, is presenting a new argument about why different groups succeed in the United States called the Triple Package. Chua and her husband, Jed Rubenfeld, think they've identified those traits, but have they? We get down to the details. But first, here's my interview with Jennifer Sr. So, let's start from the beginning. Being a parent uh, is an extremely unhappy thing to be. Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I think that social science um, has shown that it, it, it doesn't do much for your well-being. Um, this is what got me interested in the topic, right? That there is this robust literature, and it's not like some one-off study that some guy did somewhere. Certainly, kids do not seem to improve your, your happiness, and in many cases, uh, compromise it slightly. Um, that's what got me interested in the topic, um, and why I actually decided that I wanted to write a book at the, about this. Uh, happiness, schmappiness, I kind of didn't care. I was interested in the effects, generally, of children on their parents. Because all of us have walked into Barnes & Noble and seen that like row of books that tell you how you can shape your kid and mold your kid and turn your kid into a 21st century optimized human being. But very few people have turned this question around and said, how do these guys affect us? It feels, it feels like the suggestion that you're trying to make is that the real value in parenting can't be measured by social science. Right now, social science is in the business of just figuring out, do, does, does having a kid improve your affect? And to me, and I say this in the book, that's sort of the Indiana Jones moment where he and, I can't remember who the other the character is, but they look at each other and they go, we've been digging in the wrong place. Because I'm not sure that's the question you want to be asking. The question you might want to be asking is, am I leading a more meaningful life? Am I leading a life with design and purpose? Um, here's something that social science misses. Pa or not, not, not does it, actually social science catches this, but it doesn't show up in the same newspaper stories about kids making you miserable. Parents are much less likely to take their own lives than non-parents. They have earthly reasons for wanting to be here and they have meaning in their lives. And when social science tries to measure meaning, parents score higher. Something that I, I think that you actually don't bring up in your book, but that that is almost alive in every example, is that that the major uh, the major angst for the current generation of parents of middle class parents is: Am I going to be able to deliver to my children the kind of future that I was able to be that that I was given by my parents? Oh, totally. I, I always get very protective when people sit there and talk about. Oh, it's such a you know tragedy that overscheduled child. It, it's so ridiculous and so excessive. I mean, it might be excessive, and you know, but I, I don't judge this. I look at it very objectively and say, yes. But what is everybody responding to? They are responding to a lot of economic anxiety. There is this deeply internalized fear of this shrinking economic pie, and everyone. And and by the way. It's not like we have, we're have we sure about like what portion of our wisdom might be useful to our kids. I mean, I'm an expert in print journalism. Gee, that's really useful. I mean, that's obsolescing as we speak. You know, so trying to game out and figure out what might be useful to your child is a very hard thing to do. So parents wind up signing up their kids for like everything, assuming that something, anything, will be useful. And now, the question of whether specific cultural traits can lead to success with Amy Chua and Jed Rubenfeld. This book, I would say, more so than almost any I've uh, come across, the actual book is different from the buzz around it. And that uh, where the argument is that, that various cultural groups have certain traits that you believe have propelled them uh, to, to economic success in America, you don't believe that these traits are inborn. Absolutely. You don't believe that these traits are uh, are even necessarily easily transferable, and 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 you're also not blaming those groups that don't have it. Yeah, I mean, in fact, I think uh, part of our research uh, is an attempt to prove that these are not inborn traits. So one of the things we do is we look at Asian Americans among many other groups. Now, Asian American kids in the United States, they are. Uh, really hitting it out of the park in terms of educational achievement. A lot of people know this, they think it's a stereotype. It's a matter of fact. So Asian American kids score 140 points higher in their SATs than the national average. 
But what we found digging into the data is, well, in fact, it's not our finding. Other people have found this. Third generation Asian American kids, no difference whatsoever between their academic performance and the rest of the country. So just think about that. It proves it's not genetic, it's not biological, it's not racial, it explodes the whole idea of model, minority stereotypes. What we're saying is, hey, you know what? It's something going on in those first and second generations. Let's pull back the curtain, let's look at what's going on, the outlooks, the behaviors, the attitudes. That's what our book's about. Well, the one exception, of course, are the Jews. <laughs> um, this is the only group we look at where you don't see decline, or you haven't seen decline yet set in in that third generation. Every other immigrant group, you have this pattern. You get a little bit comfortable, you're two generations away from the immigrant population, and you get a little comfortable, and um, standards go down, you know, uh, success goes down, but the Jews have not demonstrated this pattern. They've been able to keep it going for a while. It's not so clear that they'll be able to keep it going beyond, for, for beyond now for much longer. There's two theories of why Jews succeed and defy the, uh, uh, the rule that there should be a drop-off. There's basically the genetic theory, the IQ theory, which is propounded by a number of people and is somewhat supported by IQ tests among Ashkenazi Jews. And then there's our theory, which says, you know what? There's this cultural difference that Jewish insecurity remains strong generation after generation. It's because the Jews know that when they start to get prosperous in a country, well, for other groups, that makes them, you know, less insecure. For Jews, there's this feeling like when we start to get prosperous, that's when trouble starts. That's when uh, they start coming after us. So you get this, you, you, you have a maintaining of insecurity in a Jewish community, and don't forget there's like, you know, the, the Holocaust happens, all kinds of things happen that affect uh, the Jews in the United States that maintains that insecurity, even as they're doing better in the course of the 20th century. But the question is, is that really true now? Or are Jews finally really becoming more secure as Americans in America. That's all for this week's abbreviated web episode of Up Close. A reminder, you can see the full episode of Up Close on the Jewish channel on cable or listen to the full audio of the show as a podcast available on iTunes and your favorite podcast players. Jewish channel is available on cable. Time Warner Cable Channel 528, IO Optimum Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, Cox Cable Channel 1, Frontier Communications, and on Comcast in the on-demand menu under premium channels. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.